You're listening to the Lifehouse Fellowship Podcast. Wherever you're listening today, we pray that this message is encouraging, it's empowering, and it equips you to change your world. Today, I just want to talk a little bit about the faithfulness of God. How many of y'all know God to be faithful? When I'm unfaithful, he's faithful. He remains. He never changes. He never goes to sleep on us. Thank God he never goes to sleep on us. You know what I'm saying? He never quits on us. Even when we fall for the millionth time, it seems like, the Lord's still there with his hand because he's faithful. He says, come on, come on, we can do this. Amen. How many of you know it's not how you start? It's how you finish. I want to finish well in the kingdom. Come on, somebody. With Jesus, it's always sweeter. We should always be going up in our relationship with the king. There will be days we have some valleys, and, there, and that's, part, that's part of life because the enemy is running real hard right now to un- try to undermine your faith. He's running real hard after you to try to get you to stop in your movement, to stop in your in your activity of serving the king. How many of you know that God desires more from us? And in that, we he's not asking for more strength. He's not asking for anything other than availability. Lord, I'm going to be available to do what you want me to do. I'm going to be available to, to when you speak, I will, I will listen and obey and move from listening to, to action and move from hearing God's word to moving into that. And then you get to this place where you go, well, uh, I, in myself, I, I fall short. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his blood. Thank God for his redemptive work that he did 2,000 years ago on the, on the cross of Calvary for you and I. And so this all leads, this life of faith leads to us understanding that when we miss it, when we fall, when we come to this place where we don't understand, that we can know that God is extremely faithful. He doesn't just think about it. He is it. It's his DNA. That's who he is. He's faithful. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the faithfulness of God. Now, once you turn over into your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, today's message is titled, God Will Keep His Promises. <laughs> if God said it, you could take it to the bank. That's a, that's a check you can cash if he said it. And I think that's one thing that I love about uh, what I was talking to you about Genesis chapter 17 and Genesis 18 and Genesis 21. Over years, Abraham and Sarah, even though they didn't see it, you know, God took him out and says, as the sands of the that are in your hands, number them. He says, I can't number those. He says, that will be your descendants. Look at the stars. Number them. And and Abraham says, I can't number those. And the father says, that will be your descendants. And here you have to understand that even in Abraham's uh, frailty and his inability to be patient, he birthed an Ishmael. And how many times do we birth Ishmaels in our lives? Because God's not doing it fast enough. God's not doing it quick enough, quick enough. And I'm here to tell you that God's in, he, he's, he's ever patient. He's, he's long suffering. 
Even when we're not in that place where we're like, God, we need you to ha- do it yesterday. God says, my timing and my strength is always perfect. And so today, we're resting in the faithfulness of God and knowing that God will keep his promises. I don't know what's coming up in the nation, but let me tell you from what I, what the prophets are saying, it's not good. I don't know what's coming up. We know it's going to be bad for them because the Bible says it'll be gross darkness, utter darkness. This shouldn't shock you with all the junk that's coming out now with the Epstein files. And we think it's just sex with children. It's not. It's more than that. And to us, we, we, we are kind of naive to some of the stuff and the evilness of the enemy. And I think what you're about to understand, what's about to come out, you will be utterly shocked. But that's where I said last week, you're going to have to, you're going to have to speak with your mouth, shut your eyes, close your ears, and listen with your spiritual ears in the season coming ahead of us. And then rest in the promises of God. Tracy, has God filled you? Is he still kind? And he's still gentle? And he's still loving? And he never gives up on us? Logan, is God faithful? Even when it didn't look like it was very good. Megan, God faithful? Amy? I think I go down the row. Every one of us know and have experienced the faithfulness of God. And I want to keep reminding you of it because where the Lord's going to take us this year, we're going to have to be led by our spirit. And even when my soul doesn't like what I'm doing, even though my soul doesn't like what I'm going through, I can trust that God has my best interest at heart. And he's always faithful. So Joshua chapter one, Joshua chapter one, In 2024, the lion's going to roar. But when the lion roars, hope is going to be restored. And our hope is not in what our hands get. Our hope is not in what in our hands do. But our hope is in the faithfulness of Jesus. Joshua chapter 1, when you're there, say amen. I'm going to read verse 1 through 9. And then we'll read, then I'll have you go over to Joshua chapter 3, okay? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, and you and all this people to, to the land which I'm given to them. There's a whole, let me stop right here. There's a whole generation of complainers. In the, gripe, gripe, complain, complain. And the Lord says that group can't go. Where God wants to take you in this next season, you're going to have to get a control over your mouth. You're going to have to start watching what comes out of the mouth. Blessings and cursings. You'll be justified by your words, the Bible says. Okay? And so this whole generation of 
gripers and complainers, God says, you don't get to possess it. You don't get to enter into the, the thing I desired for you because you keep griping and complaining. Somewhere they forgot the promises and faithfulness of God. And so let's keep reading. <laughs> Every place that the sole of your foot, holy moly, this is so good. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, in all the land of the Hittites and, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. And now I want to stop right there and go ahead and say this. It sounds like Israel has a home. It sounds like Israel has territory. It's not occupied by the Palestinians. That's not Palestinian territory. That's God's territory. So don't get it bent. When, when you hear reports saying uh, the Israel stole our, uh, the Israelites, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people stole our land, let me tell you, when God says it, that settles it. So all this stuff in the news that you're hearing about a Gaza and the Palestinians and they've got our land, that is a bunch of bohunkus. Now I'm giving, I'm getting out some real good words here, ain't I? Boy, who, who thought a step could get me free? But I want to say this. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. And the way you know that's a lie is because you've got the word that disproves the lie. Because this is true. Amen. Okay. Get off my soapbox. So I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Hallelujah. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servants, commanded you. Do not... Turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Some will say that sounds like the promises of God. This book of the law, and they had the first five books of the Torah at the time. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now turn over to Proverbs chapter 3. While you're turning there, just say this with me. I love the word of God. Verse one, my son, do not forget my law. I love it. Proverbs chapter three, verse one, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days of long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of the Lord. It sounds like God's saying, if you do this, there's something that's going to happen. People are the people of the word. People that align themselves with the word prosper. People that align themselves with the word 
and live the word and meditate on the word are people who live in peace. Now, today, we see God's faithfulness depicted it here, right here in Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. And we, we, I'm, I'm nailing down uh, the, the part where it talks about meditating on the law. But the overarching theme I want to convey to you today, three things, you ready? The unwavering nature of God's promises. Number two, the unwavering nature of God, the unwavering. Number three, the transformative power of the word of God. The Israelites face challenges And what we see before Joshua chapter 1 is a group of people who God would not allow to enter into the promised land. And God on occasion after occasion after occasion visited with the children of Israel and said, I'm the, I'm your God. I am him. And, and they said, No, Moses, you go up before us, you represent us, you come down and you tell us what God said. And, 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 you know, it's it's just all this convoluted, the, uh, just, just pressure to say, I don't want to do it. You do it for me. And Moses goes up and comes down and he goes up and he comes down and Moses misses it. And Moses strikes the rock and Moses, the Lord told him to speak to the rock and the people are murmuring and griping and complaining. God's providing a, he's a, he's a, he's a cloud by day and a fire by night. Not one of their clothes are being rent. Their clothes are still the same as they were walking out of Egypt and God's raining down manna and they're able to collect and eat this manna. Yet they find themselves murmuring, griping, complaining and saying, can we have some meat? And God says, you ain't going. You don't get the, you don't get what I had planned for you. That's a sad place to be. Now I understand we're talking about the Old Testament. I get it. But there's still some things we could transfer over into this day and age of grace. When God says it, He's going to stand by it. And whether you enter in or not will not be by his choice and decision because he he said, I'm not willing that anyone would perish. I'm not willing that anyone would live below their means. I'm not willing. But now he's saying the choice is Point number one, ready? Even when I'm unfaithful, God is still faithful. You can take that to the bank today. Some of you, you may say, Lord, you don't know what I did last night, Pastor. You don't know the temptations I had all week this week. You may be saying to me, Pastor, you don't know what's going on in my head right now. If you knew, if you, if I allowed you to come and live in my head, you would see what all I'm thinking. Oh, you don't want to know that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed it. But today, thank God for Jesus. 
Just because I'm down doesn't mean I have to stay down. Just because I've missed it doesn't mean I have to stay there. And I, I like what the apostle said. He said he, it, when he was prophesying. I love that. Pick up where we left off. Isn't that just like the Lord? In our own shortcomings, God's unfailing love and grace, his unmerited favor, it rescues us, guiding us away from the pitfalls of life. When you and I miss it, we don't run from God, we run to him. Number two, we're talking about the promises of God today, the faithfulness of God today. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to you. Many of us are trying to do this in our own strength. You can't. Many of us are trying to Make it on our own. And can I just say something? You can't make it on your own. It was a couple months back. I usually am pretty good about having a pretty good nest egg of stuff that I'm, you know, I'm just saving and I, I didn't have nothing. And I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I need your help. I, I, I'm believing God for a certain amount. I'm believing you for this, and, and, uh, and I know you'll come by it honestly. Because there's something I want to do in my future and it's going to take a miracle for it to happen. And I'm asking you for help. And the Holy Spirit just rested on me. And I just began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And it was, it was just like the Holy Spirit, you know, he always points us to Jesus, right? The Holy Spirit, he's always pointing us to the Father. And it wasn't just a matter of days that things began to turn in my favor. And I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit. We think the Holy Spirit's all tongues. And it is. But it's also being led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he leads, guides, and directs us into all truth. This is who the Holy Spirit is. And this is God's gift to you. His faithfulness to you is to give you the Holy Ghost. To help you, especially even now. He knows all things. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows what's ahead. And if you have the Holy Ghost and you'll be led by him, you'll be positioned where you don't go through some things that other people are having to go through. Why? Because if you're listening to the Holy Ghost, he'll position you to be at the right place at the right time. Every time. I, there's so many times I'm just driving, even, even here today. I'm driving and I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost says, you better slow down. You saw him too? <laughs> I was about to call Dennis because I know they're about 15 minutes behind me. 
So let me. <laughs> Champ, you better slow your roll. But it was the Holy Ghost. That'd been real funny if you saw pastor on the side of the road getting a ticket today as y'all was coming to church. I was praying for the officer, exactly what I was doing. This, doesn't the Holy Ghost want to help you there? Sure he does. Does the Holy Spirit want to put you, uh, Holy Spirit want to help you in your life? With your finances? Sure he does. How about teaching your children and, and correcting your children when it's time to correct them? Don't you think the Holy Spirit wants to help you correct? How about when you need to go in and ask your boss for a raise? Don't you know the Holy Spirit will say, hey, won't you hang out? Not today. I don't know how many times that's happened to me. I'm like, oh, this, they better pay me. Tanya says, get out of here. <laughs> Y'all thought that was good, didn't you? But then I go, Holy Spirit. What do you want to do? See, the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you. That's how much God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave you his spirit. Today when we were worshiping him and we was giving him honor, can you feel the spirit alive in this place? Now go over to Joshua chapter 3. And we're still on point number 2. God's gift to you is the Holy Ghost. Joshua chapter 3, and we're going to go to verse 9. This is a great description of who the Holy Ghost is to you. When you're there, say amen. Verse 9. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Termites and the Gergeshites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore, take yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of their feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that come down from upstream and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people and as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zaretan. So the waters that went down into the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea, fell and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite of Jericho. Then the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, 
stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until the ark, until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. The Ark of the Covenant represents God's presence. Here, Joshua assigned one man from each tribe to carry the Ark. As they go over to cross over into their land, they step into the Jordan and the water stops. There's going to be some things in this season that because the Holy Spirit and you have welcomed the Holy Spirit into your life, there are going to be some things you walk into that you never thought you would walk into. There's going to be some miracle signs and wonders take place because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He always takes care of his people and puts them at the right place all the time. You see, thank God we don't have to lean into our own intellect. Thank God I don't have to lean into my own wisdom for the direction I need for life. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for His wisdom. Thank God for His, His ability upon my ability. And my ability upon his ability. Working together in tandem, we create a powerful, powerful force. You see, when you understand that the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you, you understand that you're a carrier of the presence of God. When you understand that when you have the Holy Spirit, that you're a carrier of God's presence, you can miraculously walk into the new season knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if you then, if you then, Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Some would say, well, you know, the Holy Spirit's for some, not for all. Well, I I got a scripture right here that disproves all that. Well, the Holy Spirit is gifting, you know, some get it, some don't. Oh, it's for all of us. If you want it, get it. And if you don't got it, I ain't going to condemn you. But at the same time, why wouldn't you not want it? If you're a children of the living, if you're if you're a child of God, if you're if we're the children of the living God, don't we even want to carry His presence everywhere we go? Sure we do, because I'm not a part-time lover. I'm not just here to go through Christianity on a part-time basis. I need Jesus 24-7. I need the Spirit in my life every day. Come on. I think I've already done this before, but you know, here you go. I don't want to be a part-time lover. You certainly, you certainly wouldn't expect that of your spouse. Hey, and I'm telling you, those of you that are have boyfriends or girlfriends. You certainly don't want them to have part-time lovers. I must be preaching really good. But we approach God many times this 
way. I don't want you Monday through Friday. I'll take a portion of you on Sunday. And God says, I want all or nothing. I want all of you. I don't want a portion of you. I just don't want to have a, I know about you. I want to be intimately acquainted with you. I want to know who you are. I want to know how you think. I want to know what's in your heart. And the way that happens is I'm a carrier of his presence day in and day out, day and night, night in and night out. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's presence is the difference maker. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you have God's presence. Are you a carrier of God's presence? God's command to Joshua echoes echoes even stronger today. Be strong and courageous. And that's rooted in the promises of God and his faithfulness over your life. We're going to have to be strong and very courageous. Point number three. God's word is alive. How many of y'all been following along with me on our 21 day podcast? If you don't know where that's at, go see Miss Bailey in the back. She'll help you out. It's our website. Go to our website and go to watch slash listen. You can start listening to all the podcasts. It'll pull up everything. You can follow along. Do you know I know pastors that don't even open their Bible on Sundays? I know men and women of God that get up and use their talent, their performance. Why do you you think some people have left this place? Because we're not about performance. We want the anointing. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I have a high, Tanya and I, we have come way too far to give up what we've been pressing the Lord for. We desire for him to be glorified and magnified and move from, I don't mind you having skill. I don't mind you getting up there performing, but somewhere it's got to transfer. Somewhere there's got to be a shift. Somewhere there's got to be going, Lord, I'm nothing without the anointing. I have to have the anointing. Amen. I don't know where I that came from. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come on. But see, it, so it comes over to this place. Where we're, where we're pushing towards. The revelation, oh, that's what I was talking about. The revelation of, oh, that's a great idea. If you're a pastor, why don't you open your Bible? I was talking about performance in my realm. And then I took it over into worship. And I, but how many performers do we have in the church? Why do you think the church is dying as a whole? There's a lot of people that claim the title of Christianity. I think it's 60%. Do you know this percentage? Oh, are you graduate? You're heading that way. The 
but but what we're understanding is the, theologically when it comes to Christianity about 35 to 40 percent of those who call themselves Christians they are way off That the last poll was they don't even believe that Jesus was resurrected. But yet they call themselves Christian. And then there's this, this realm of people that don't believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And that is for us today. You come to me too late. So I stand up here and I preach the word because I've been studying all week. I've studied things you didn't know I studied. I've gone down rabbit holes. You don't even know one of, know the rabbit holes. Any rabbit holers in here? I saw a sister back there going, that's me, that's me, that's me. Just get on something and you just start digging. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as it doesn't shift your theology and your philosophy. Christ is king. The creed. Oh, this is weird. All right. God's word is life. Consistent meditation deepens faith connection. That's a good one right there. Consistent meditation deepens faith connection. Some of us, we feel like God's a million miles away. And that's fine. And he can handle it. But when you're in the word, he can't stay away for long. John chapter 15 says if he, <laughs> I'm going to put your, let me go over there. John chapter 15. I love this scripture. I love it so much that I forgot it. Verse 7. I start at verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. You shall, <laughs> you will ask what you desire, one translation says, and it shall be done for you. Tell me when the word is in you, and the words coming out of you, something's got to change. God's word is life. Say that with me. Say it one more time. It's life. And at the very beginning, we read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Somewhere we've got to make some changes, church. God remains faithful to his promises and we desire what he wants 
We have to be people of the word and not silent when it comes to the word. I don't need man's wisdom. I need God's wisdom. So, I encourage you to have daily Bible reading. Alex, come on up here. Hey, grab that mic right there. Somebody. Thank you, Morgan. She didn't know I put her on the spot. I was thinking about you last night. I was going to call you, but it was too late. It was already 1 o'clock, and I was like, she's asleep. So, uh, I just want to know a little bit about your Bible reading plan. You and Cliff. Okay, you came to the house the other day, and you was telling me about this. I just want to know about it. Just share just a little bit about what you and Cliff are doing. And that's it. So, <laughs> yeah, so Cliff and I have made it a, um, a priority for our marriage and as a couple and as individuals too, to read the Bible. Um, because it's kind of funny to be like, yeah, I'm a Christian and I've never read the entire Bible. You're doing the uh, the Bible in a year, is that yeah. right? so we're doing the 40 Days Through the Bible by Lisa Turkhurst. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we, she is kind of skipping along through like the mains and we want to read it all, <laughs> even right. like the funny names and tribes and things like that. Um, so we're reading it all and we've just made it a priority because um, God's calling us to go higher as a couple and as individuals. And uh, we can't play church. We have to live it every yeah. day, yeah. and uh, and I've been doing this way too long to have not <laughs> read the entire Bible. Right. So not that I don't know the Bible. You know, right, but, right, right, right. But yeah, just making it a priority, and um, also opening my eyes of understanding and things I thought. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah that helps. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Let's all stand to our feet. I'm proud. Father, there's nothing like when your kids are finding Jesus for themselves. We're still praying for Winston, but he'll get there. I've said it a few times, you don't get one Sutton, you get all of us. We're in pursuit of Jesus. And today I'm thankful that we're not in this journey alone, but every one of you have made it a life pursuit to seek the heart of God for your life and family. Today, I believe you're going to leave here encouraged knowing that his promises for you are real. They're tangible. They're things you can touch. Don't be silent towards it. God loves you so much. He's faithful to you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to you. And to know the heart of God, you've got to get into his word. Can I challenge you today to make it a priority to get into your word every day? Can I challenge you today to pray in the Holy Ghost every day? Just take some time. And Father, I just thank you right now for my family. 
thank you for who you are, for you're great, you're good, you're kind, you're gentle. And Lord, I thank you for your presence. Even Moses says, if your presence doesn't go with us, Lord, we're not leaving this place. But essentially, I know I'm a carrier of your presence. And I could take you to the restaurant. I could take you to my work. I could take you to my job. I could take you, Father God, wherever I go, I know you are there. Lord, May we be ever mindful of your promises. Your promises of divine healing. Your promises of provision and supply. Your promises of peace. Your promises, Father God. May they be something that we hold dear. Thank you for listening today. Our hope is that this message is an encouragement to you to change your world. Before you go, we want to connect with you. If you have a prayer request, you're interested in what we have to offer for our students, or you want to learn more about us, visit us at our website at lifehousefellowship.net. Remember, great days are here and greater days are ahead.